MS Gigs welcomes you to the Summer House Sessions and um, today we are joined by Wilson Noble. Thanks very much for coming Wilson. You're very welcome Mark. Um, I was wondering if you would be able to tell people out there who don't know about your music who you are and what you're about. Oh well, there's a question. Um, I? Yes, I can do that. Um, okay, so my name is Wilson Noble. I'm a local musician here in the Highlands at the minute. I'm originally from North East, a retune called Fraserburgh, the Brock. Um, so I perform a sort of mixture of original music, um, some Mayan songs, Mayan uh, compositions. So I'm, I'm either, you either see me playing guitar just all on its own, just me and a guitar. Singing, singing a song, guitar and voice, or you might see me using a loop pedal. I do quite a lot of looping work, um, so sort of, which involves sort of building arrangements in a live scenario. But usually, um, well, it'd have to be with a stage sort of setup, an amplified setup. Um, yeah. So, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> um. Maybe you could tell people a bit about your style of how you how you play. Okay. Um, yeah. How how do you mean? Like, like what what has been your influence and in, and in, in what style that you play at the moment? Aye. Yeah. Totally. Um, aye. It's been a it's been an interesting journey. Um, so, as a kid, starting playing music. I grew up listening to heavy metal music, rock music, so I, I used to play in like, punk bands, cover bands, rock cover bands, and then they, like I've played in an array of heavy metal bands in my time, in, in my youth, um, still music I love and listen to and appreciate and still play it, um, yeah, amazing, amazing music, um, so I've got that, like that, Rock and heavy metal is the roots of me. Like that's yeah. where my musicality is is originally come out of. So a lot of my rhythms, a lot of the rhythms I play, and a lot of the freedom in music um, that comes through me is fair rock music, and the uh, heavy metal music. I thought especially the rhythm um, has come from heavy metal music, and then as the journey has progressed over the years, um, when I hit my twenties, um, I found. I found singer-songwriters uh, and it was all like I spent a good couple of years listening to, not just listening but really listening and absorbing um, a lot of the American singer-songwriters in the 60s, so the big singer-songwriter boom, we had Joan Mitchell, um, uh, um, Paul Simon, Cat Stevens, Donovan, Scottish, good old Scottish Donovan, fast-sounded American. <laughs> um, all these people, um, Sam and Garfunkel, um, even John Denver, country music, is so that I listen in, absorbing all this music, Bob Dylan, John Martin, huge John Martin fan, uh, another, another Scottish guy. Um, so it's it's been a journey, it's progressed, and I, sort of, I blended that together and created my own singer songwriter experience. And it was it was a funny experience, Mark, I have to say, because if you can imagine this, um, I was heavily involved with heavy metal music, rock music, and I, I still am to this yeah. day. But at the time, I I didn't uh, I wasn't involved in really anything else. Yeah. Mm, so I played in the local bands, good, quite quite good local bands, quite well known type of thing, um, in the social circle of Aberdeenshire at the time, and then. I ended up going travelling in 2005, when I was, tw I was 25, and when I came back for travelling, I was, my thinking was different, my outlook was different, lots of things were different. When I left to go travelling, um, I just took my acoustic guitar, Yeah. and I'd left my electric guitar, which I was so used to playing, behind, because I couldn't have taken it with me to go travelling to the place, so I took my acoustic, and, uh, and when I came back... I was basically like a little, well, um, a little folky, a little hippie, 
Um, and my friends thought I was completely mad. <laughs> I was just like, what's, what's going on here? Because I, because I was so, I was so like involved in heavy metal, and then I'll, and then when I came back, I was, it was like I was a, yeah, a different person. I would say certainly <laughs> that you come across as um, a Scottish folk folk singer songwriter mm. um, and and that's how i've always known you um and, and i think part of your being scottish and heritage comes very cross in in your play and mm. and um your poetry that you do comes across really strongly how you feel about being scottish so i was wondering maybe if you would mind giving somebody a wee verse in some of your poetry i yeah t totally do that totally do that I'll explain afterwards as well where that's uh, come from. Um, okay, so here's a wee poem. It's quite very short um, about uh, about coming from the northeast of Scotland and about uh, about being a Doric speaking laddie from the northeast. So this is a song called, well, a poem actually. And if you can find comfy, and if you can find your comfy. And if you mine for your, and as a shame it surrounds you, brought in at far. Fan doon into mining, mining for your, fan doon in your whining, mining for your. But it's bonny, and it's bra, and it's beautiful, and it's real. And it's often you've been looking for. If you can, for your comfy. If you mind, for your. There's a shame that surrounds you. Bragging hard for. Thank you very much. That was uh, a lovely piece there. So, um, what influences your, your, your writing when it comes to songs and poetry? Aye, well. So like I say, it, it's been a journey. So the metal thing, the singer songwriter thing, and there's there's a real uh, like I've always had an interest in in otherworldly things. So as in like I've always known ever since I was a wee a wee boy that this world was only part of existence. I never understood it when I was a kid. I just knew that this world was um, temporary, or I was I was mere to it. I've always known that my entire life. But I'm, to me, I'm still trying to understand. Um, still trying to understand it. So I've spent a lot of years um, studying different things, like um, like uh, spiritual things, um, shamanic things. Um, Things that just kind of teach you about yourself, teach you about your the wholeness of your being, um, different things. So a lot of a lot of these experiences come out in my music um, massively. Like, and I, like I've really struggled in my life to be able to explain that because I find that I'm trying to explain something that is um, that it's almost. It's really hard to just put into words what the hell I'm on about <laughs> because it's come for this sort of really deep, deep place. I think for, for everybody, I think maybe if you were to give everybody a show and, and let everybody take that interpretation from your music, if you could play as a tune, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that would be a good tune, wouldn't it? Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
was saying fantastic. It's um, it's managed to, to bring out the weather. I could hear the the, the wind picking up there. So um, no, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Very Thank, much. you man. Thank you. So, for me, I always uh, like to gauge other people's experiences of, of things as well. And how does it feel when you pick up your guitar and start playing? Yeah. So when I'm uh, when I'm playing music, I'm, okay. So. <laughs> So it was just um, the basic, the most basic way I can put it is, it just feels like me. <laughs> like so, it feels like immediately. Um, I feel immediately like whole would be the wrong word, but like as like it's a wholeness. It's a wholeness. Just immediate, like kind of. It's just so an intrinsic part of. Uh, of me it just feels like I found another part of me <laughs> or something like that does that for make the, sense? For the, for the likes of myself uh, you know I started to play guitar and playing guitar to me was important because it gave me headspace in, in, a, in a very busy world where things are really difficult at times and, mm. and it's one of these spaces that you can just really like go of what's in your head and just concentrate on something totally aye so absolutely um so in that side yeah like playing music to me just throws me into the moment like i can just be when i'm playing music it's a probably a near better answer like um it just puts me right in the moment and i can just focus on on doing that and I feel very content that would be the word I feel very content and yeah happy content like quite immediately really yeah. <laughs> um, and obviously part of that contentness you, you that must help you in, in when it comes to recording and, and you're releasing your new album at the moment um, how's how's that going at the moment hi yeah it's good fine thanks um, yeah, it's been a journey and a half that in um, because I I took it upon myself to record the entire album, produce the entire album, write it, and release it, market it. So doing everything from uh, thinking about it uh, to to putting it on the table. So it's it's been a massive journey. Um, so I've I've finished recording it in, in December, no January, just the beginning of January. Recorded it, um, got it mastered, um, done that, and then trying my very best, like, to not just put it out, yeah. <laughs> because because it's you just want to. But because I've put my marketing head on, yeah, um, so building a marketing plan is, you know, around around that, and sort of delivering it to a schedule the album. So I've I've scheduled it for the summer the summer so I'm, I'm putting out a few singles before the summer sort of building up to the release of it and at the same time I'm in the middle of booking a, a wee tour for in right. the summer time just lo locally in Scotland um, so all of that kind of it's all happening at the same time so it's it's kind of it's, it's filled my my brain up of tasks <laughs> like no I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. No, it, it, and, and everybody just thinks, I'll make an album, it's easy. But yeah. then there's all these other components, like you say, to throw in. Um, do you have any tunes from your album that you would like to play us today? Oh, goodness, I would love to play every single one of them. I really would. Yeah. But the thing is, so the new album, um, which is called Human, um, it's called Human because it's all about... A humanity, my my expression of humanity. Yeah. Some of the things I'm sharing today um, come through. I would love to play some of it for you, Mark, and I could play ditties of it. But the thing is, the whole album is based around looping, right? So, like the entire album, apart from spoken word and poetry, 
but even the instrumentals are soundscapes and they're all built around creating layers of sound with a, the guitar and the voice and percussion and creating an atmosphere. So I, it's, I, I couldn't do them justice. Aye, cool. Okay, so yeah, sorry I can't play nothing off a new album, um, but I'll play this one. Play this one instead. So this tune, I wrote this in my travels, so it's, quite, it's an old, old song. Um, so maybe 2005, 2006, so however old that is, 10, 12, 13 years. So I um, wrote this one in Australia, I can't remember where, but uh, this is a song called Old Man. There's an old man sitting next to me He has a familiar smile on his face He says he has a story to tell About this time and this space I listen like a memory And it's echoed in my brain And you've lived so long time ago as with this face There's an old man sitting next to me He has a familiar smile on his face He says he has a story to tell about this time and this space I listen like a memory and it's echo time I did one of these I've got a bad habit I'm a wooer at the end of a song but um, sometimes when they're nice quiet songs like that it's not appropriate for a woo. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, last year you had quite an interesting year you played mm. a couple of the Battle of Bands. Um, how did you um, feel about that experience especially as a solo artist against bands? Oh, I totally. Um, aye, good point there, Mark. Good point. Um, aye, it was. Oh, the first, the first one was Nairn. So I did the Nairn, the sub list, Battle of the Bands. That was in November, I think. Yeah, kind of mind. It came first anyway, and uh, 
And then I did the Inverness Battle of the Bands. That was at the Tooth and Claw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of just thought, why not? <laughs> I kind of just thought, you know, why not? Um, because I've been working on doing a lot of this looping, a lot of this sort of bigger sound live performance thing, why not just bring that to a Battle of the Bands and be, be a, not quite a band, but a bigger sounding artist. I just, yeah, I thought, you know, but it was like, um, it was cool. Like I loved the experience performing at both of them was great, loved it. But I knew, I knew that I probably wouldn't have been the run into the wind such a thing <laughs> because it's a battle of the bands. Um, and you've got to remember things like that as well. When you're in a band, um, there's more than one person to, especially th like things like helping get the word out, because both of them involve voting, audience voting. So you've got, you've got more. You, well, you can have more friends, more fans. Yeah. Potentially, maybe they some solo artists are massive and they've got loads of fans. And anyway, so it's it's individual. But uh, I mean, I, I personally loved it. I loved performing um, at both of them. Um, and it was, yeah, it was a wee bit of daunting kind of thing. Like, why am I here when I'm near band? But I did I did ask them both first, you know, if it, if it was cool like, to be a solo artist and maybe try and do something. And they were totally open to that. It was it, it was just, it was called a Battle of the Bands, but it seemed quite open to Battle of the Bands. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, did I answer your question? Yes, yeah, yeah, no, no <laughs> I, I think that... that very much does answer the question. It's uh, it's quite a sort of different way of, of, of when you read Battle of the Bands you, you don't expect to see a solo artist and, and, and you made it further than the first round, is that not right? Uh, no, no I never. No, 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 I never. no, no that's okay. What was, what did I, no, no. I only performed once for both of them, yeah. so I never, I never made it through to the next level of, right, of either right. of them. But the, but the performances were well received, definitely, and I really enjoyed the experience uh, of playing. Um, like in Nairn, Nairn was amazing. Like you could have heard a pin drop, kind of like it was, it was a lovely, yeah. lovely experience, and it gave me the opportunity to, like, give an audience, like some of the bigger sound I've been working on. Yeah. Which was, which was kind of my intention. I was kind of because I was, I mean, obviously you enter a competition, you want to win, to totally. That's you know, but because I knew that it was not, it was unlikely. Um, I just kind of enjoyed the, enjoyed, the experience and you know made the most of it. Most of it. Yeah. And last year, what would you say would have been your your most exciting gig that you did last year? What what was what's a gig yeah. that, that struck home to you? Aye, okay. So the most uh, enjoyable enjoyable gig. I'm trying to maybe think about exciting, but the most enjoyable gig was up in Wick. Right. Um. Aye. Good old Wick. So way up on the, up in the north there. Played at the the Life Arts Centre. In Wick, that was excellent. Really loved that. Um, what I loved about it, um, well, it'd been it'd been quite a few months of work putting the gig together with the promoter up in Wick, um, through a sort of a touring agency type of thing. So anyway, we kind of worked on it for a few months, and we did the PR. So. Um, did the market in together? We sort of shared the market in, shared the promotion, and I also introduced a workshop in the afternoon. So I did a guitar workshop right. in the afternoon, which was a Celtic fingerstyle, um, which is something, something I love. Um, and it all went really well. Really, really loved it. So we're both like both teams. So myself and the team up in Wick. So I made it happen, and it, it was great. From I mean, up in Wick, I. Nobody really, before I played there, nobody has no kens me up in Wick. But we managed to we managed to generate an audience kind of interest to come to the gig through the advertising, the PR that we did together. So that that was the best one because it was yeah it worked really well. So 
there's also a, a big um, part of um, Wilson Noble music that maybe people don't realise that you do do teaching and uh, is, is that something that is important to you as a musician? Yeah, totally. Uh, yes, I can teach. I teach quite a lot at the moment. Um, it, yeah, it's teaching is a great thing because not only do you get to, you know, share, you know, share knowledge and skills, and also help um, other people grow and watch them grow. It's a it's a mutual exchange. So at the same time, you grow, you learn. At the same time as the student, it's always a mutual, mutual thing. Um, so it's been it's been amazing. It's been amazing because, like, I've had to like really uh, what would be the right words um, bring together everything I can into a, a manageable, you know, twenty five years of playing music, yeah. you know, and and different things and and uh, getting those skills in place to be able to to pass them on in an understandable understandable way, way. Um, it's been great it's been really really totally beneficial I'd recommend if you know if you have that inclination as a musician it's a really rewarding thing to do you know, hopefully the student enjoys it as well <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> I hope so <laughs> so yeah. I, w- I was wondering if you'd be able to bring us to your last song for the the session uh, aye cool so okay so to end um, I'll do a wee instrumental um, so, so I decided today since it's such a nice location it is a really nice nice space so, um, so thanks thanks for having me by the way Mark it's a pleasure You're very welcome pleasure to be here um, I, I'll stick to sort of keeping it sort of gentle so none of the big bellow and the uh, rock songs and that um, so I'll just do a wee bit of instrumental guitar to end so this is a a lovely wee tune Irish jig called Banish Misfortune
as uh, well, it's uh, mesmerising watching your, your fingers run up and down uh, the neck on that one there. It's, it's not a style I play, it's uh, something that I, I would like to work up to, you know. So, um, wondering if you could tell folks about your plans for the rest of the year, what, what gigs you have on, or about your, some information about your album and your website. Yeah, totally, totally can do that. Hi, so like I say, um, working on a building a wee tour, Scotland. Um, so that'll be the summer, so a few a few months time. Still working on that, so I have to st stay peeled. Um, locally, playing the Market Bar in Inverness next Saturday. Yep, in the afternoon. It's my first gig in the Market Bar as a solo me. Um, so that's really nice. Um, so hopefully that goes well. And you can find me on my website, which is wilsonnoble.com. I have a card. I'll give you a business card, even though it's a, a TV. So can you see that? I can scan it in later on. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even really see that. But there you go. So wilsonnoble.com uh, keep an eye on my there what I've been doing recently Mark is I've just started my newsletter um, so I've done two of them February and March so I'm doing a regular newsletter to keep up to date with my news um, so dive in on that check it out and uh, come see me see, say hello yeah that'll be cool thank you very much for coming today that brings us to the end of our summer house session thanks very much again Thank you, Mark. Pleasure. Totally.